Hey guys, today I'm going to take a look at uh, or Retro Orange Pi running on the Orange Pi PC. Now, uh, you should be able to see the TV alright, and what you want to do is get it loaded up on your micro SD card. Ready? Once the micro SD card is plugged into your Orange Pi PC, you simply plug in the power socket, the power cable, and we should see a boot screen. Now, Retro Orange Pi you can use with uh, one of these if you have one. Uh, if I do the right side up, if you have one of these, you can use one of these, but if you also have one of these because you happen to buy a really bad uh, Android box called the um, the Eagle Box this also works as well and so does any plug and play controller with this obviously you're going to need to plug it in with a cable and you can see that we end up with the loading screen once that boots up, we should get an all-mac installed like we are now, and that should just install it for us onto uh, in the right way. Once that's done, we get access to Retro Orange Pi 3.0. Now, there's a couple of things I have noticed with this particular software. Um, one of the things is it seems really difficult to transfer any ROM files or any games, which is rather strange. I've plugged in a USB uh, with games on, and they just have not been. Um, accepted or uh, they are not findable through the file browser on the Orange Pi. Also, um, there the other tutorials that show you how to do it are on older versions of Pi, uh, Retro Orange Pi, and it seems a lot easier to do it uh, via them. So it may just be a case of installing an older version of Retro Orange Pi in order to get the features that you need to transfer the ROMs. Now you can transfer the ROMs via SSH, but I prefer doing it uh, in I prefer simpler ways of doing it than via SSH. And here we are, Retro Orange Pi boots up. It's actually a really nice OS, and if you have a controller, it works really well. You get the nice little PlayStation sound at the beginning there, and it just looks like it's it looks like a proper full uh, package, which is better than some of the the ones I've looked at. Uh, all the artwork is, is really neat and nicely drawn, it's absolutely great, in fact I'd probably love that image to be... Um, so as you can see now we do get a little bit of background noise and I may need to turn that down due to copyright regulations and Nintendo being absolute scumbags. Once we've in it says gamepad detected and you simply want to hold the A button on the gamepad or if your gamepad has something different um, then you hold it uh, obviously switch on your gamepad first hmm. why isn't it working today let's let's unplug it let's plug it back in it seems to not be uh, recognizing the gamepad right now Which is very strange. What about if I un switch it off, switch it on? Okay, let's try it this way. Switch it off, switch it on, plug it in. Ah, there we go. So we hold down the A button, uh, D pad up, D pad down, D pad left, D pad right, start, select A, B, X, Y, uh, left bottom, um, right bottom, left top, right top, and then left thumb. Um, right thumb, left analog up, oops, that's wrong, uh, <laughs> right down, <laughs> right analog up, down, left, uh, that's wrong as well. Anyway, once we've done that we can press OK and then we get access to this. The D-pad is used to traverse through the menus. Uh, as you can see, we got Kodi, we got Dreamcast, Apple II, Amiga, Super Nintendo, ScumVM, RetroPie, PlayStation, PSP, Ports, Nintendo Emulation System, Neo Geo, N64, Mega Drive, Sega Master System, uh, Mayhem, 
back to Cody again. We've got the, all those emulators there as well as Cody, which makes it a really nice uh, complete setup. If we press start, we can end up with, uh, you can see the menu there. Um, and there used to be a place where you could actually uh, launch a desktop. And I believe you might be able to do it through RetroPie, or you, at least you could, but you can't now. Sadly, that's the downside, uh, which means transferring your ROMs can be a bit difficult. But if we go to uh, if we go to ports, there is actually some games included on here, and you can see we've got Cannibal, Outrun Engine, uh, Cave Story, Doom, Duke Nukem 3D, uh, Quake, Prince of Persia, Zelda, 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 Mario War, and the Goonies, and then the last Wolfenstein 3D. Some of these are. Uh, some of these are community made and some of these are um, genuine copies uh, of games. If we uh, click on Outrun, you can see now that the game launches up fairly quickly and uh, we can change the settings here which is video, uh, the frame rate, full screen, window scale, scale, scan lines. We can actually turn them on so it looks more realistic or we can turn them uh, make them, wow, we can produce scan lines across the whole of the screen or we can have them off and uh, we can save and return and then we can play the game. So insert coin, you press Y and then when you're ready you press the X button. Uh, the A button is to uh, to drive and the analog stick is also to drive uh, if you have a controller that is and it's actually really cool I, I've been, I was playing this game last time I installed this for about an hour uh, really enjoyed it just brings me back to the days when uh, games like this were, were prime and king and uh, people complain about graphics but this looks great If you, if you want to quit the game, it's fairly simple, you just, well, I think it's fairly simple. Oh yeah, you can change camera, camera angles as well. I think there's a button combination. But I can't think of... what it was. Damn. Anyway. Game over. We'll get into our name in here. Some of these use the analog, some of them use the D-pad, so it can get a bit confusing. Uh, I think in the games they try and use the analog. But as you can see, it doesn't always work quite as you want it to. Anyway, what we'll do is we'll reboot the system because I can't remember how we exit stuff. There is a specific button combination to exit the various games. It's fairly quick to load though, and like I say, it's a great uh, looking system. It's a really good uh, looking UI that is definitely worth checking out. And I personally think I'm going to go back and see what the older versions are like, 
in the hope that I can transfer my ROMs over from a USB stick um, rather than SSH. I think every time you load as well, you do have to input the controls again. I don't think it remembers the controls. Which is a bit of a downside. Yeah. So you have to configure the controls again. Left thumb. Left analog up. Left analog down, left analog left, left analog right, right analog up, right analog down, right analog left, right analog right. Yes. Done it correctly this time. You can see it's configuring all of the em uh, emulators again. And basically, yeah, we end up with... There's, there's quite a few things. I really want to check out the N64 emulation and uh, the SNES emulation. Definitely the Dreamcast emulation as well. There's some games I've played on that that I really loved. The PlayStation emulation, PSP emulation. I do want to try out this stuff, but it's just hard uh, getting the ROMs on there. If you know what, uh, if you know how to get the ROMs on there, then please do let me know in the comment section below because I'm finding it really difficult and I don't want to use SSH to be honest with you. I just want to plug in a USB stick and be able to play the damn thing um, without having to go through complicated ways of, well, not super complicated, but annoying ways of, of transferring files. But yeah, this is a, a look at uh, Retro Orange Pi on the Orange Pi PC, and as you can see, it runs really smoothly. Uh, the games that are on there are, are good fun, and it's a very polished and sleek looking user interface on a HD TV. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you didn't hit the dislike button, if you want to see more, please let me know in the comment section below. And if you have any tips, also let me know in the comment section below. And please slap the subscribe button too, as it really does help me out. Hope you enjoyed this video. Cheers.